Do you need errors and emissions, general liability, drone insurance, or even cyber liability coverage? Then let me tell you about our sponsor, Claim Professionals Liability Insurance Company, or CPLIC. Founded 16 years ago by independent adjusters for independent adjusters, CPLIC offers products to give you peace of mind while you help your insurance get back to the way things were before the storm. Apply now at cplic.net. What if you could get complete measurements, including a pretty accurate roof ESX that you can drop straight into your Xactimate sketch by only taking about eight photos of a house from the ground? I know what you're thinking, but Matt, what you're describing is magic, and we all know that magic isn't real, or is it? In this video, I'll give you a complete walkthrough of the Hover app that you've been hearing all about, starting now. <laughs> You're watching The Property IA Show. Hey, it's Matt here with The Property IA Show on Adjuster TV and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe to Adjuster TV right here on YouTube. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. And just so you know, an angel gets its wings when you hit the like button. Oh, technology. The double-edged sword of tech simultaneously promises to make our lives and jobs easier, while at the same time, supposedly promises to make our jobs obsolete. Fortunately, it's not really as simple as that. A lot of the latest fancy tech, while seeming to be very powerful and having great promise, once it's put into action, unforeseen act factors can come into play that kind of blunt that promise. Virtual adjusting, for example. Three years ago, the buzz was that VA work was going to eradicate trained and licensed field adjusters in favor of untrained, unlicensed smartphones with a person attached doing all of the field work. Then, another slightly less untrained person sitting at a desk a thousand miles away does the scope and writes the estimate. It looked good on paper and was very attractive to carriers for a number of reasons. But in practice, it's kind of proved to not be as awesome as hoped, especially for large loss and more complex claims. Is it gone? No. Is it going away? Probably not. But just like with all tech, it's evolving into something different. Probably gonna be for very small claims where the insured is often the field adjuster. So while property field IAs might not be getting as many of the really small claims, experienced and licensed adjuster careers are safe for now since the best customer service experience for medium and larger losses is always going to be having a knowledgeable, trained, experienced, and licensed person who can make coverage decisions and answer questions and even write estimates and checks on site at the insured's house. Okay, well, what about drones? We'll get into that in a second, but first, I wanna tell you about our new sponsor, the IA firm, CCMS and Associates. CCMS and Associates dedicates their management team to training and developing a talented adjusting team. That's you and me. As a full service independent insurance adjusting company, CCMS and Associates specializes in every part of the claim service cycle, including day-to-day -day property claims, casualty claims, complex claims, and residential and commercial losses. Strategic process, measured results. CCMS and Associates. CCMS and Associates is currently looking for adjusters who are interested in deploying for TWIA or Texas Windstorm Insurance Association events. For more information and to join their roster, send an email to careers at ccmsclaims.com or visit ccmsclaims.com slash work with us. So everybody was terrified that these little toy helicopters that have $37 worth of plastic and parts and cost 1100 bucks were gonna buzz in and that field adjusters would be replaced by punk kids showing up with a drone to do hail inspections. Again, this hasn't exactly turned out that way. Drones are specialized equipment and their best use still is to access extremely dangerous or inaccessible structures, roofs, or even areas. Wind and hail claims still need a person up on the roof to do a physical, tactile inspection. While AI and machine learning combined with infrared remote sensing can probably detect hail impacts most of the time, there is no technology that I know of that can lift a shingle to see if there are nail pull-throughs or to perform a shingle brittleness test. Somebody's gotta be on the roof for that. Also, you still can't use drones everywhere. 
I mean, sure, you can call air traffic control at Lindbergh in St. Louis to let them know that you're flying your drone for every single claim you're doing that day, but what a pain. I'm trying to make fewer phone calls, not more. I want a gadget that's gonna take work off of my plate, not add to it. Never mind that I'll still need to keep at least four charged batteries with me and a way to charge them all day, every single day, when I could have just climbed that roof and been done with it. Call me old school. Well, what about scoping and photo apps? You know, I get emails almost every single day from entrepreneurs who have a new app that's designed to replace a paper scope and also to help adjusters take and label photos quickly. And this is, this is actually a pretty big need. You know, I love you guys, and I'm not gonna tell you to not keep trying because I really think that there's a great opportunity for innovation here. But still, if I can be faster on paper, I'm personally not going to start using an app other than to help you test it out. And if it makes me faster than paper, I'll absolutely consider using it and talking about it more. All that being said, there are apps and tech out there that I do believe will not only make me faster as an adjuster, but will also increase my file accuracy. The Matterport system is one of them. I've got an interview and a complete Matterport Pro 2 demo coming very soon. I'm very excited about it. It's a long video. The other one, is hover. By now, if you're an adjuster or you're researching independent claims adjusting as a career, you've likely heard of Hover. The more I heard that iFirms and companies like FileTrack were working to integrate Hover into their workflows, the more I realized that I needed to check this out for myself. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through using the Hover app to get the photos that the software needs to create the measurements, 3D model, and ESX. And in the second video, part two of this one, I'm gonna show you what you get and how you can use it to write your claim, as well as how I would incorporate Hover into my claims workflow for maximum efficiency. Okay, first things first, download the app and install it on your, your phone set up an account, and then I'm gonna jump in here and I'm gonna create a new uh, claim and I'm gonna type in the name and then it gives you the option to put in the address or to use your current location. You can put in the claim number and then you're gonna select a deliverable type and in this case, I'm gonna choose complete 3D. Then from there, I'm just gonna start taking photos and the phone will ask you to turn the phone to turn everything sideways, uh, so that you can get you know proper orientation, and you just basically follow these uh, as you walk around the house. You're just going to follow the uh, little pictures, which tells you which corner of the house to take it the, the picture from. And basically, you're going to want to try to get in corner to corner, have the house inside of the frame. So if you if you need to back up a little bit, maybe get that tree out of the way in order for the software to create the, the dimensions from your photos, it's, it wants to be able to see everything in the photo. So we're gonna go over to the right side now, and we just keep moving our way around the house, taking photos. It is probably the most dead simple thing I could think, gadget I can think of to get uh, measurements of a house. And in some cases, if you're, you have the, the area blocked by something, you may need to take multiple photos of a side. So I just click the right side again, and hit the plus button, and then I'm gonna move around and get that full elevation right there. I can't back up any farther. So I'm gonna grab one more photo here to get the rest of that, that right elevation uh, in the shot. So you can take more than eight photos to, in order to get everything that, that the, the, uh, the program is gonna need in order to create the 3D model and to get all the, the proper measurements. Now I'm gonna do the, the back right, which, is, which was the next photo, and I've got a full field of view there. You can see the beautiful mountains in the background, and I'm gonna go ahead and jump on the back and probably grab another back elevation shot. Hit the plus button. Once I walk around to that side and get the rest of that. So it can, you know, it's gonna give me the measurements of the windows and the doors and, and the fascia and all that trim that you could see on there. Um, and now we're gonna go ahead and get the back left, which again is we're gonna get it from corner to corner so you can see that I've got the whole house in my image there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the left side. And this left side is gonna be kind of a tough one because I've got a fence there and a dog, of course. Uh, but I have to get down kind of low to get it all in there. And even though there's that tree limb in the way, 
it's still going to give me an accurate uh, dimension for that side of the house, which is, I think is pretty amazing. But I'm going to go ahead and grab another left side shot. And I'm getting basically that far left uh, little offset that sticks out there. You can see where those chairs are. That's the reason why I took that extra photo on that left side. And probably grab one more of the left side, more from the front. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the front left corner of the house. I'm going to get as back as far as I can and grab the front left. And that should be it. I mean, if I hit the continue button here, and then it starts to upload, and then after a little while, it's going to process. And once that's done, then I can open it up and start looking at the data that it has put together. And that's it. Once you've completed your walk around photos and hit complete, then you'll have to wait a little bit to get the report back. I personally had the reports come back in as little as 30 minutes, but in some cases it's taken up to a couple of hours. If you're not writing claims on site, then you're gonna have your hover report back long before you ever need to sit down and write that claim up. So stay tuned for next week's video where we're gonna take a look at what you get with your hover report, the 3D model and what you can do with that, as well as how to order an ESX of the roof and importing that into your exact estimate. So we'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.